Welcome. In this video, I want to just briefly talk about your next project and kind of the planning process, um, especially for any of you that miss class. This should be helpful for you um, because it is a little bit of a longer process than in the past. So this is the planning guide and I've gone ahead and filled it out myself. Um, my goal is to make a project alongside you guys for this one. Um, so hopefully we can achieve that. All right, so for the first, uh, the first part up here says, the topic of your second project is storytelling. Think about what story you wanna tell and how you will depict it. If you haven't seen the slideshow or you weren't in class um, about this project, please go watch that first so that you can see the inspiration artist and um, just a little bit more about artists as storytellers and mixed media collage. So here I want you to think of three different stories so that you have three options for your project. Obviously you won't do all of them, but just to get a few ideas. Um, I kind of picked three things that have been on my mind recently, um, or just things I'm interested in. So one thing that's been on my mind a lot is Alzheimer's because I had two parents pass away, or parents, two grandparents pass away this year um, from, well, with Alzheimer's. And so just that progression and what it does to your mind is, I mean, it's really sad, but it's also um, just something that you're kind of forced to think about when you have, when someone in your family has it. Um, I've also been thinking a lot about Utah's ancient history because I recently went to Dinosaur National Monument, got to see a lot of dinosaur fossils, um, kind of imagine what Utah used to be like millions of years ago. And then I also got to see hundreds of petroglyphs, so just about a thousand years ago. Um, that really interested me as well. And lastly, um, I kind of want to do something on endangered species because I really like to draw um, or depict, draw, paint, whatever, animals and um, like watching all those like National Geographic shows and everything. So I um, kind of wanted to focus on an endangered species for that. For number two, I want you to think about whose perspective you will tell the story from. So are you, if it's a personal story, you could tell it from your own perspective. I was kind of thinking of telling it from my grandfather's perspective um, since he was uh, married to my grandma and he was the most involved. For number two, my second story, I thought it'd be cool to show from a dinosaur's perspective. And then for my third story, just a third person perspective, which if you've learned that in English class, that is just kind of a an outside narrator. So that would just be me, someone who doesn't interact with endangered species, um, telling a story. Okay, number three, what is a mood of each story? Um, the first one would be kind of a painful mood. The second one I think would be really imaginative because we don't, like scientists have found out a lot about the dinosaurs, but we don't actually know a lot of things for sure. And I, it's just me imagining what Utah was like um, you know, millions of years ago. And then the, for the endangered species, I wanted this to be a hopeful, um, story, not a really sad, depressing story. So that's what I would be going for there. What media and techniques will you use? So again, the word media means material. Um, so that's any of the mixed media materials that you want to use or any techniques. So I think I would want to use plaster, paper, fabric, paint, pastel, possibly embroidery, and possibly stencil. So it's a lot, but this is a mixed media project, um, so feel free to use as many as you want. Then I did a quick sketch of each of my ideas. Um, they don't really need to be detailed, it's just kind of to get your idea down on the page. I know this one is pretty detailed, but you don't need to be that meticulous with it. And I wrote a couple of notes just because it didn't, you couldn't really tell what they were. Um, you don't need to write notes, but if it helps you, that's fine. All right, let's go over to the back side. So first you need to choose which story you're gonna do. And I forgot to star the one that I'm choosing. So I'm gonna do the story about my grandmother in particular. Um, 
and that's this first one. So on the back side, number seven, do some research on your chosen topic, sketch any imagery that would be appropriate to include. Since this is a personal story, um, I didn't need to do that much research, but I did do a little bit of research on Alzheimer's, um, and then I also just looked up some images of things that would be relevant to my story. So I have a brain, a black hole, my grandpa's mem memoir, magnolia trees, um, my grandparents' house, and hands. And then after you research, I want you to write four to five sentence, um, sentences summarizing the purpose of your project. Tell me what story you're telling and how you will choose to depict it. So this is just a little bit about the research that I did, um, my experience why I chose this, and then what I'm trying to show with that. So if you want to read it, you can pause it and read it. Otherwise, um, just know that I do want you to write like four to five thoughtful sentences about your project. I also want to note that your project does not have to be something deeply personal. Um, it could just be something that you're kind of interested in. So like the, you know, doing something about dinosaurs or even just like something random that you happen to like. Okay, down here where I kind of wrote around, it says, talk to Ms. Thome about your idea. Then on a blank sketchbook paper, sketch and plan your project in greater detail. There's no way that you can plan a project this, um, I don't, this complex on just one planning guide. So the rest of your planning, I want you to just do on some blank sketchbook paper. So I am at home, I don't have sketchbook paper, but I just cut some paper in half so that I can put it in my sketchbook when I get back. Okay, so this is kind of my overall sketch of what I want to do. Let me get that a little closer to the camera. Um, this is a photo of my grandma with my dad and my uncle when they were babies. Um, and I kind of just, I really like the photo of her, but I also wanted to show the progression of, um, like, you know, you're an adult, but then Alzheimer's kind of reverts you back to a childlike state. So I wanted to show that picture. Then I have um, their home in the background and there's just one light on in the home. And then I also put a magnolia tree because they had this big magnolia tree outside their house. They still do actually, that we used to always climb as kids. And so I've got the magnolia tree, I'm gonna have some flowers and then you can kind of see the flowers are really vibrant and alive over here, and then they start to wilt as they get closer to that lit window. Um, then I was kind of thinking, and with uh, mixed media, we always want to tie things together, especially when there's this much going on. So you wanna limit just, limit yourself to just a couple of symbols and things that you're repeating. Like I had quite a few more things in this that I'm not using, like the black hole in the hands. Um, and I wanted that window to make sense, but also to stand out more so instead of just doing the one window, I'm going to repeat that basic shape of the window with a bright gold color in multiple places on the painting. Okay, so this is, then I did a few sketches of each layer just to help me plan out what I was going to do in what order. So first I'm going to add background texture and I think I'm going to try and make the texture just slightly resemble a brain up here and then just kind of streaky um, random texture over here. So I don't think I'll make it this defined. I want it to be really subtle, but that'll be my first layer. And I think I'll use newspaper and glue for that. Then my second layer is going to be paint. I am going to use acrylic first, so I'm going to do the whole thing with acrylic and I want a really dark rich color at the top and then kind of a lighter, brighter color at the bottom and I'm going to fade it from one to another and then I'll go over it with some watercolor um, just so that it's not very flat. I want it to have like just some cool texture to it. Okay, my third layer will be painting the house. And I think I'm mostly gonna paint that, but I might use a little bit of torn paper or magazines 
kind of worked in it just so that it's not boring. My fourth layer is going to be this picture and I kind of liked the style that um, we watched in that video about um, Hung Lui, the, art the Chinese artist that did all those portraits. So I was thinking about watering down some acrylic paint, making it drippy. Um, and then I haven't decided if I want to leave the faces blank so that the house and everything shows through or if I want to actually paint them in so that they don't look as creepy. So I will probably figure that out once I start painting. And then I was gonna, I was gonna take like a two sentence clip from my grandpa's memoir and um, do a transfer onto this page. Okay, then the next layer would be the magnolia tree. Um, I think I wanna use egg cartons and or newspaper for that texture and then paint and draw over it. Um, and then I, I either want to use fabric or magazine pieces for the magnolia flowers. I'm not entirely sure which one, so we'll kind of play that by ear and see how it looks. And then the last layer, as you could tell, I was getting really sick of drawing the same thing over and over, so it's getting more sloppy as we go on. But as long as you can tell what your idea is, that's okay. And on the last one, I did not want to draw that whole thing again, so I just showed the windows. For the windows, I either will cut and make a stencil and use gold paint, or I will use gold leaf. I'm not sure which one, but I do want it to be metallic um, and really stand out. So that's my plan for that one. Some possible, after I did all this planning, then I was looking back and... Um, some changes that I wanted to make to it were to make the brain less defined so that it's just kind of more subtle, doesn't stand out as a brain. Then I think I want to paint the faces in instead of leaving them blank. And I want to use more colors and drips kind of like in that Hung Lui example. And then just to get everything sorted in my mind, um, I came up with my general color scheme. So I just drew little boxes took all the colors that I used and put them together to make sure that I would like that color combination. Um, and I think the only one that bothers me is this, and I think if I did that in a metallic gold, I would like the rest of them together. So I think we're good there. So that is basically my extensive planning for this project. Um, I will create more videos as I start to actually um, make the project and I'm hoping to work on it in class with you guys. So um, It'll you know, hopefully I can do that and it'll be fun to have some artwork at the end of it um, Just like you guys. All right, let me know if you have any questions Hopefully that answered a lot of them and I can't wait to see what stories you decide to tell with this project